We're now here from our final part of the day. Tom Nub, founder and CEO Todd Green, joins us to discuss the challenges that they solve for millions of users each month. Todd, please. Appreciate it. Do I need that? Do I need it? No, I don't think. Oh, I guess I did. No, I, I guess need you that. do. Um, all right. Hi, everyone. I'm Todd Green, the CEO of PubNub. And there's only one slide I'd like to show you, actually. So I don't know if I push this or you guys push it over there, but there should be a picture of uh, the globe coming up pretty soon. Um, so we'll get there eventually. So my name's Todd Green, as I said. And I really want to talk about uh, a new type of network that's required for Internet of Things, for, for the IoT. Um, and why, why is this important? Well, first of all, and we'll talk about this in a second, uh, first of all, when you're building connected devices in the lab. Connectivity seems pretty easy. You've got a few devices on a table somewhere and a server behind, uh, behind the wall, and, and, and things are connected pretty well, and, and the connectivity works. And a lot of people here have been talking about a lot of optimizations on the device side, a, a lot of sort of big data challenges around IoT. But when you deploy these things out globally, all of a sudden you have hundreds of thousands of devices. You're on a heterogeneous network, right? The internet is not one network. It's cell towers, it's slow connectivity, it's fast connectivity, it's proxy servers and firewalls and tunnels and lots of things that disrupt our connectivity. And so um, at PubNub, really, we, we think a lot about this. It's what we do. But we, we, I want to talk about sort of the five challenges of connectivity around IoT. Uh, and just cover these things briefly, but very important things. First of all, um, signaling. So when you basically got your connected devices, you start thinking about the data that they absorb and generate as data streams. And now you want to have reliable signaling. You want to have reliable two-way signaling, because sometimes those devices are talking to your server to collect data. Sometimes your server needs to talk to the devices. And sometimes you want the devices to talk to each other. But either way, you have issues with respect to going through tunnels, connectivity drop-offs. And you want to have a reliable way to, get that connect to, to know that when you send a stream of data, it's going to arrive on the other side all the time. And the second is security. Now, security is a big, huge umbrella, but let's talk about three aspects. The first is um, authorization. So we talked, to, you know, Christian talked about this a bit before, but when I send a data stream or receive a data stream, I want to make sure that that device has the authorization to receive or send on that stream of data, right? Number two, you want your network to deal with um, something even more important, which is open ports. You do not want to have your devices with an open port out to the internet. Uh, we, there's just, we always talk about security and we worry about this with IoT. This is a big issue. You're never going to be able to protect your device if it's listening on an open port. So somehow you want to have bidirectional communication, but you don't want to have ports open. And the third area of security that you have to consider is um, encryption. And that's an obvious one I won't cover, but you want to have that data encrypted, end-to-end um, -end encryption. So you want your network to cover signaling, and you want your network to cover um, security. You also want presence detection. If those devices drop off, you want to know immediately that they're gone. When they come back on, you want to know that. You want a history of that. And you want battery state and other things. Um, power consumption. You want a way to do all these uh, things I just talked about with low battery drain, low power consumption, not just, by the way, for power and battery, but also CPU consumption. As you're doing all this communication, you don't want to take up 100% of that really small CPU, inexpensive CPU on that embedded device. And finally, bandwidth. OK, so you want to do all this stuff with low bandwidth, not just because bandwidth on a cellular network, if it's mobile, is expensive. But also because imagine hundreds of thousands of devices sending re request response signals back to your server. You have a huge server issue and a huge server farm now just trying to absorb all this data. So PubNub, these are the types of things that we've solved. And what you're looking at up here is just one one thousandth of our current traffic. Today, we actually have 200 million connected devices connecting to our global network with 14, 14 points of presence. Um, and we basically average between 50, 60,000 transactions a second, peaking at over 3 million. And we do the things I described across a lot of industries. Automotive, uh, everyone from Easy Taxi to Get Taxi to Sidecar and Lyft all use PubNub for signaling between their taxis and the consumers. Home automation. Companies like Revolve, great home automation companies that do signaling in and out of the house. Companies like Insteon, companies like Revent, and lots of other industries as well. Um, so uh, basically, um, we're hosting a really fun after party tonight. So you should come down to that. It's at 725 Folsom. Um, but the last thing I'll say is you know, connectivity shouldn't be one of those things you think about at the end when you roll out your IoT deployment. It should be something you think about early on. And I think those are the five key areas very quickly. Signaling, security, presence, power consumption, and bandwidth. If you consider those five things, um, you can really deploy a very large scale and, uh, and successful deployment. Thank you.